This is Missy Hyatt, and you're listening to the Interactive Interview. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the Interactive Interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Welcome back to the Weekend Warriors of Wrestling as we're being joined by Missy Hyatt. Missy, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. And how about you? It's all about you. Uh, I'm doing all right. As you, Damn it. No, <laughs> I'm doing all right. Got a little bit of a cold, but I'm almost over it now. Uh, you know, ever since I got the started getting flu shot, I don't get the flu. Do you get a, a, you usually get a cold when you get a flu shot, though, don't you? No, I don't even get that. See, that's I the reason I don't get a flu shot is because... That's the reason I never get a flu shot is because when I get a flu shot, I get a little cold get a instead. Little yeah. And I'd rather just take my chances time. of ever having the flu. Yeah, see, I think the first time that I did, I might have got a little supple. But yeah, ever since I've been doing that, I'm, and I probably like skip it every other year, I really have not had like bad flu. Huh. Well, that's good news. Yeah. All right, well, we talked to Miss uh, Francine yesterday, and she mentioned that you guys are going to be doing a show this weekend. Yes, we're in Lenore, um, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I believe it's north of Charlotte. Ah, so yeah, you're not quite in Flair Country. I'm sorry, what? So you're not quite in Flair Country. Yeah, we are. I mean, I think anything in the Carolinas is kind of Flair Country. Yeah. But, you know, I know that um, Ricky Steamboat's son is now racing cars. Yes, yes. And so... I was thinking about, shoot, I should call Bonnie because I would, you know, see if there's a race or something on Saturday, but mm. I didn't get around to it. But now that I'm thinking about it, I might try to do that. If you need her number, I can help you out with that. Okay. Yeah, I do. Cause she gave me the card, but uh, it's probably in my pouch. I haven't talked to her in a couple of months, but oh, a few years back, I was going to be writing uh, Ricky's book and we got started and we just never finished. Oh, uh, that would be a great book. Oh, I think it would be, but I think, uh, unfortunately, he's too nice of a guy to tell the truth about things. Yeah, well, you know what? That might be just a night breath of fresh air. Yeah, it might be after... I mean, let me tell you something. She, Bunny looks great. I mean, I haven't seen her in, what, 10 years? Mm-hmm. And, or more, and she looks same. <laughs> yeah, I've seen uh, recent pictures. She actually sent me a Christmas card, and it was her whole family, and she looks pretty good. Yeah, she does. I couldn't believe the pictures of Ricky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, amazed. It's Richie? Like, wow. Everybody grows up and gets older except me. It's really <laughs> weird. I'm so confused about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have to ask you this next question, and I'm sure you know what it's going to be. I have to. I know. You know it, don't you? All right, um, I haven't seen it yet, but somebody sent me a copy, and they already told me what is said. Um, yes, what do you have to say about the... Head. Yeah, she said that... <laughs> yeah, she said you're on crack. What is that all I'm about? Not, I'm a crackhead. Okay. I, you know what? I really don't know. Like, uh, seven months ago, um, or more, a little bit more than that, Francine had a ladies' show, right, a week before Chris passed away. And out, in, out in Dallas, right. and me and Tammy talked, and she had been mad at me because of the Dixon stuff. She was seeing Sal, the business partner, that stole like, oh God, three fourths of, three quarters of a million dollars from us. Wow. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because I've already had attorneys look at it and stuff, and then we don't even know like his all the fraud that he did because he even came out just this past year with another Dixon DVD. Never had my signature. It's a long. It's going to be. Anyway. Another one, or was this that, that Wrestle Erotica one? Um, it was after Wrestle Erotica. He came out with another one. There was another one? Wow. Yeah, he came out with another so one. So he's really so, screwing you guys. And he did this distribution, and he was selling it through the credit card, not through, like, the um, um, the Internet thing, you know, mm -hmm. from iBill. He was doing it through a credit card machine that he had at the office. We never got paid for any of that. It's a, it's a long, you know, it's just, you know, to me, he's going to get it, you know, give him, a, you know, he's had enough rope. Yeah. You know, he's going to do it. I mean, we, we paid for the wrestling shows. He bought, we paid for the wrestling ring. You know, and one of his first shows that he had, because I, I, I um, got the um, bank statement. And yeah. had all the wrestlers' names, you know, where he, I mean, I saw checks where he 
had written them. So, but anyway, he was lying to her and saying, you know, I was the one stealing all the money, which no idea that he took my name off the checking account, which I never even had the check in my possession. But he took my name off the account like a year and a half before that. Right. And like he knew in September when I pulled it off the net, he, I found out then that he wasn't renewing the the corporation because you have to do that in like January or February. It's like thirty bucks. If you wait too late, it's like eight hundred bucks. So he knew back in February he was gonna like, you know, screw you. Yeah, I mean, he'd been doing it the whole time, and like we were paying an exorbitant amount for hosting. And mm. he told me it was Tony's company. Well, I did some investigation because what happened was is I went into rehab. Yes. And um, yeah, I got sober, and so you know you start you get clear, and so that's when I started investigating and found out that you know Tim and Tony owned the internet company, and that twenty five hundred dollars a month for hosting. No, that's not a, that's not for what you guys were doing. That? No way, yeah, no. That's what he was t- As a guy who runs a website, uh, anything over a hundred is is highway robbery. Yeah, yeah, and he was trying to say, oh, and that was and that was not the bandwidth that we were paying for either. Oh. So it's just, yeah. I mean, it's okay because... And I, I mean, I saw and Vixens. Oh, and this is great. High Spot Video. Yeah. They had sent, like, he had, they had ordered and did, like, a um, wholesale. Well, three times they sent a check to the company name, to the company address. All of a sudden, they sent him two checks where well, they traded some of our DVDs for the ring. And then he had them, all of a sudden, he said, you know, put the check to my name and send him to his home address. And hmm. he was stealing from his sin. And the people at High Spots had no clue. Did and you still, so they, I mean, are you... They had no clue. But you don't, you know, you don't always send it to a company and then all of a sudden, you know. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, whatever. But so Tammy and I, we talked about it and then she realized that, and everything was fine. And then we did some tickle videos and then I got her booked on this thing in North Carolina. Right. We stayed in the same room. You know, everything was fine. I got her on video, and we're, like, at Target or Walmart. She's like, oh, I'm just, yeah, I love you. You're my best friend. And she bought a right. T-shirt and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know what happened. I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I... <laughs> you know, and I got her booked for this show in North Carolina, and I got her booked next month. She's still booked, right? Canada. We're going to Canada, huh? Yeah, she's still booked for this weekend, too, right? Yeah. I, I, bo- I got her booked there. Wow. And then she... Then, you know, my boyfriend saw on the website, mm-hmm. and then he, you know, heard it, and he's joking because he's a police officer, and he's like, now you you and Tammy can fight on, fight over which boyfriend makes less money. <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> he, he, he heard it. I, I didn't hear it. Mm. I've not yet he seen it. it. And because I didn't want to hear it because it would make me cry. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't want to hear it you know and as for the crap comment well my friend that was in my wedding came over and this is before we even did fix it and she came over and she was smoking something and and everything and um, I tried something which I didn't like because I have ADD (laughs) and that was it I mean I'm always straightforward you know and I had to go to rehab because I would have died if I wouldn't have gone Hmm. you know I got so Far and deep, you know. What year was this that you went to rehab? Um, I've been clean and sober for two years, eight months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's since Vixens. Um, I think so. Anyway. I got clean, right, and I went through, you know, I did the rehab, and then I pulled Vixens off the net. Huh. And Vixens was off the net in September, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I pulled it because my nephew was a webmaster, so he just deleted the whole thing. Right, and I don't think it's even up there anymore. I don't think the domain is no, registered. Yeah, no, it can't be. But I think it is in Japan because we built it and had it made over in, in Japanese. Uh-huh. And he has enough content to run it for a couple years over there. So, hmm. But no, I'm letting him get the money. You can do all that right now because, you know. Are you still, um, I remember we interviewed you when the Wrestle Erotica one came out, and you were pretty... Um, outraged against high spots are you still ha- against them I'm just you know you don't know what to think really I'm more you know I, you know I just think that they have very bad business practices that they wouldn't 
you know, and then they don't want to even apologize because they're the ones that you, you send checks made out to a company and then you're going to send it, you know, to a guy. And they know. It's not like they don't know anything about the wrestling business. Right. But they know it was in me and Sal and Tammy. Right. Oh, wow. So, I mean, and, and I'm sure, I mean, they had to have known when they were writing it. At least I would have known mm. something uh, shady's going on. I would have, too. Well, mm -hmm. I would have, too. So how are you going to approach this weekend when you're going to be in the same uh, locker you know room what? as Tammy? I'm just going to, uh, you know what, the Pretend. best thing to do is just stay away. Because she called me and tried to say that she didn't say it. And, mm. you know, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, the time the, the, in, the allegedly smoking crack mm -hmm. um, was before we even did this one. And in Charlotte, she was asking if I had any pills and stuff. You know, and I could talk a lot of stuff about her. Right. I have pictures. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I've heard about your pictures, actually. Yeah. And, I mean... <sighs> I'll give you one time. One time at a wrestling fix and shoot, she passed out. She threw up. Uh. She was asleep. So we dug vomit out of her mouth and got her sitting up Ugh. and woke her up. Wow. And put my finger down her throat and made her throw up and wake her up. Wow. And I just had, um, uh, Mike had just walked in and he's like, yeah, I was kind of watching it because I knew she was drinking and taking foamers and stuff. And then, you know, he said, oh, she's, she's okay. She's sleeping. I'm like, no, I better go check on her. You know, I had a feeling, and I went in there, and I'm glad I did. Who, who's Mike, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, that Mike Thunderbolt. Okay. You know, he, he's a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's like, I mean, I this girl, like, Tammy and I were very, very close, at least I thought so, because... There's not a lot of females mm -hmm. that been around the business and, you know, done the things that we've done. Right. And I guess that's why Francine and I get along so well. I mean, I, you know, I admire Francine. Yeah. And I respect Francine as a worker, as a person, and everything like that. And, mm -hmm. and I always had that of Timmy, too. I mean, let me tell you something. I was always so jealous of her when she hit the wrestling scene. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember... And I would hear people would say bad things about her. And I was like, you know, you, that's just lying because she's a pretty girl. I know how the wrestlers are. You talk, you talk that talk. Right, right, right. She used to stick up for it. I didn't even know her. I just thought it was all jealousy. Right. And anybody that saw I your mean, guys, uh, you did it... You did a shoot. Inter you did a shoot interview back in two thousand one, and you said all these th things about her that you were, you had such respect for her, and you thought she was great. Oh my God! Let me tell you something. The camera loves that girl. Yeah. I mean, you put her. I'll, I'll never forget seeing her do those things like on that old um, uh, Shawn Michaels bed when she came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is great. I mean, she is really, or she was. <laughs> the best, you know. I mean, right. well, I mean, I, I mean, I have to say this. I mean, I think she was a lot better than me. I think Francine had better timing than myself, mm. you know. And that's that's the honest truth. <laughs> and I also, I mean, I I liked her. I mean, when she first called me, we had never met. Well, we had met one time, but it was like hello, hello. But it was like I had known her forever. Yeah. You know, it was like time Sherry Martell called me. It's like I had known her. You know, uh, we had never met, but I, had, you know, I felt like, oh, I know this girl. Sherry's one of a kind. Oh, she's wonderful. Yeah. I'm still mad though because she was supposed to be in, in, she was when she was in WWF. Yeah. She was there doing the Family Feud. Yeah. This was back, I guess, for cell phones and stuff, and so she was coming to town, and the cleaning lady wasn't scheduled that week, so I cleaned my house. I had, going to cook dinner, all this other stuff, and she no-showed me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah. Didn't you guys work a match much later, though, like in 99 yeah, or so? the only, you know, let me tell you something, the only match I have ever done that was good 
<laughs> was uh, was Sherry, and she's like, and I was so nervous, and that's when I won the Canadian heavyweight championship belt. Yeah, that belt. you took all those pictures with. Before, yeah, before China did. See, I won a man's belt before she did. <laughs> anyway, and it, it was by accident, of course. But Sherry uh, said, just listen to me. And I just went in there, relaxed, and listened to her. And I saw it, and I was like, you know, that wasn't that bad, considering I had no clue what I was doing. Yeah. So, that, so if anyone ever says that Sherry Martell can work with a broomstick and make it look good, yeah. she can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's good to see she's actually getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It is great. She and still owes me one of those sexy maid outfits. Too, so if you talk to her, you let her know. I'm still waiting. Uh, I've, been, I've been trying to get a hold of her for um, one of our other shows, so hopefully I can, uh, if I do, I will let her know. Oh, that's the thing. I, that's the other thing I wanted to mention to you. Uh, a couple weeks back, we interviewed a guy that you might remember, the one who named you Gary Michael Capetta. <laughs> I mean, the, the one who met, named you the First Lady of Wrestling. First Lady. Yeah. Yes. He says uh, he had a message for you, actually. Okay. He says he's still waiting for his book. Oh. You know what? <laughs> I, I just, do you have an address or something for me? I don't have an address, but I have a phone number. Okay. Do you want me to give you that number? Give me an address. Oh, yeah, let's just give it to everybody. Yeah, I wasn't going to be off the air. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I need to send him one, definitely, because I even, I, I say that in my book. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I remember the place we were in, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Yeah, he mentions that he met you and and he wanted to get a copy of your book and and he never got it. Oh. And he also he also said that before. He also talked about your uh, you used to like to skate around the the arena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, another. <laughs> yes, I would bring my rollerblades and I would. Yeah, because you have to be there at the arena. You have to be there so early. Right. And then, like, even a few times, like, I like to read very obscure kind of stuff, like Goethe, Massadier, old stuff, and Milton, things like that. And I remember, like, a couple, like, kind of like Gary Chester and a couple people, like, saw what I was reading, and they're like, oh, wow, you read that? I'm like, what? Do you think I'm, like, illiterate or something? <laughs> Like, what do you think I'm supposed to be reading? Like, you know, romance novel? <laughs> yeah. So it, it was good to talk to him, and he, he was uh, a riot. I didn't expect him to be, but he had all these stories, and it was a great interview. Oh, he's got great stories, because he, you know, he was around, and, you know, the thing is, that if you if you around, like, when all those booking meetings and production meetings, just sit there and be quiet. You can learn a lot. Mm-hmm. And I just used to kind of be in the corner and kind of watch and see, and, you know, a lot of things happen. (laughs) Yeah, he told uh, the story about Sid and Arn Anderson with the scissors. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what was it? Somebody had a squeegee? Was that the squeegee story? I don't know. I I don't know about the squeegee story, but this was that Sid... um, Because everybody came in, and then they had, like, all these squeegees everywhere. I think (laughs) he was trying to fight Brian Pillman, and Sid came in with a squeegee out of his car. (laughs) Like, what are you going to do with a squeegee? I don't know. Sid also once went into a hotel room and pulled out a chair. So, (laughs) go figure. To, for a fight, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah, is this the time when he, he went to Arn Anderson's room? Yeah, and he banged the chair against the door, and, and Arn came out with a pair of scissors. For no reason? Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- it's just, uh, Sid must I have been... I think that's the time, that was, that was in Atlanta. And then he went downstairs, I think, to his car, and I think that's when he got the squeegee. <laughs> Next wow. time you talk to Gary, ask him about the squeegee. I remember something, because I remember, like, the... But next time at TV, we come in there and there was like a hundred squeegees everywhere. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to have him on again because it was just he was just a riot, and um, everybody who's heard the interview has just been blown away by how funny he was. And he wasn't even trying to be funny; he was just telling stories. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it's really funny because when I'll tell people some stories, like you know, that happened in wrestling, they're just they're laughing and laughing. And I'm like. And they, they think I'm lying. Right. <laughs> because it's just so retarded. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm really quite serious. <laughs> so. All right, Missy. Well, once again, we can't thank you enough for joining us. Want to plug the website real quick? Oh, 
definitely. It's Missy Hyatt and Francine TV.com, and I have some really cool stuff coming up. What's that? Really great video stuff. Videos? So I already have, like, awesome pictures and stuff, but uh, Francine, you know, we have the live chats, and Francine's playing poker. Okay. And if I could get enough people to play blackjack, I would love to do that. See, but, I don't, I don't know how um, to play poker, but I know how to play blackjack, so maybe I will well, join then you. Well, you need to come on and play blackjack with me, because we need to, uh, we, I think, <laughs> you need a certain amount of people, I think. So email DJ and tell her, because if we can get enough people, then we can play some blackjack, and you don't have to play for money. Okay. Yeah, they give you chips and stuff like that, so, and that's fun, and it's quick and everything like that. And my chats get fun. Yeah, I'm sure they but do. I've done some really great video stuff, and people, like, we wrote in about the myths about my breasts and what they can and can't do. Yeah, I saw that, about the flotation device and all that. Yeah, well, that's what I'm having them, then they are, like, uh, giving me different things that they want me to try, experiments mm. for the breasts that that I'm going to do on, on tape and then also like next week everybody's going to put down like I have these like costumes what I'm going to wear on the chat mm -hmm. next week <laughs> alright Missy well and thank it's you it's a very interactive site yeah it is and uh, absolutely <laughs> I, I'm on there but I don't go to the chats I just kind of check out the videos and things so I, I enjoy it and once again we can't thank you enough for joining us and one bit of advice for the weekend mm -hmm. no cat fights you know I'm just I told my boyfriend I said, listen, honey, if the cops there call, and he's like, because I have his, like, baby shield and his car and everything like that, and he's like, listen, if you put a bag over her head, don't be using my shield and try to get out of that. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I won't. But I would never, ever, ever do that. If anything, right. I was my... I cried. My feelings were really, really hurt. So, uh, well, what are you going to do? I apologize that we made you talk about it. Oh, no, that's okay, because I know everybody's going to ask me and stuff like that. I'm waiting. I know she did a shoot inter a shoot thing, and I heard it's even worse on the shoot video. Right, and that's what I said. If somebody has it on the way to me, um, and as soon as I see it, I, I'll let you know if it's as bad as everybody says. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it is after that, and I'm just like, whatever. You know, if it, if it makes her feel good to do it to me, then... You know, rock on. <laughs> rock on. All right, Missy, we'll see you next week, and good luck at work, All and right. have a good weekend. Thank you, you too. All right, take it easy. Okay, bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Missy? Yeah? All right, just wanted to say thank you one more time. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I didn't know if you were still, if you wanted to yeah. put that up in paper. I Did wanted to get... Um, Gary's number? Or yeah. Was it Gary's yeah, number, or did somebody... I'm in the car, and I don't have... A pen. A pen. So, are you going to be calling him? Am I going to be what? Are you going to be calling him? Probably not. Oh, okay. Because I thought you were going to call him on the show. Shoot. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to get, I'm gonna have to, um, get his number next time because I'm going to call. I don't have a pen anywhere. Do I still have your email address? I think I might still have it on file somewhere. Yeah, MissyHyatt at TampaBay.R.com. Okay. I'll send you his number through that. Okay. You can send it through there. And then you were going to check on... Um, if you get Sherry. Yeah, I, I have a number on her. I don't know if it still works. I haven't interviewed her in two years. So okay. she might have changed her number eight times since then. Yeah, pass it on. And was there somebody else? <laughs> I don't know. We kept going on and on. People tonight were like, hmm, yeah, I want to get in touch with that. Yeah, what are you? Oh, Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a number on Bonnie. And I'll also give you her email address because she's on there a lot too. You know what? Could, could you email it to me? Sure, I will. I will. Yeah, because I'll go home and check it tonight, and then tomorrow I'll call her. All right. Yeah, I'll find out where, how far Lenore is. I have no idea where it's at. I don't either. But I have to fly through Detroit. <laughs> what? Huh? You're going to have to fly through Detroit? Yeah, the booker, the guy that's doing the show, um, I don't know, I guess it was such a cheap ticket. But Wouldn't that be Tampa, farther north? Detroit, yeah, Tampa to Detroit, then to All right. Um, Charlotte. And Francine's going that way, too. Wow, that's weird. She's going Philadelphia to Detroit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how that works, but okay. I know. Me either. All right. Well, thanks again, Missy. We really do appreciate it. Oh, sure. Anytime. I like it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, have, bye. have a good night. Bye. Hey, it's Tony Schiavone, and you're listening to the Wrestling Epicenter. And I would stick around. But I'm desperately out of time!